the life expectancy. They didn't expect to pay anybody anything. They wanted you to pay into this Ponzi scheme. And again, it's a Ponzi scheme because uh, you have to keep, it, it doesn't pay for itself. You have to keep getting more and more people into the scheme to keep it going. That's one of the uh, reasons that they're looking for this. And of course, the, the cheap labor. But Paul, when we look at the divide and conquer aspect of this, as these refugees are coming up through Syria, going in through Hungary, if we look at the, ge the uh, geography of this, they're coming up through Hungary, the Eastern European countries. Those countries were on the front line of the conflict with Islam hundreds of years ago, a thousand years ago. They knew what that was like. They've also suffered under the privations of socialism. They're not interested in having this massive influx of people who cannot be assimilated, who they are aware of in their history has been a, a source of conflict within their countries. That's one of the reasons why they're closing their borders. Yeah, that's that's what's happening in the case of Hungary. Of course, the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, came out a few weeks ago and said, Europe is based on Christian foundations and principles. Moving in potentially millions of people who aren't assimilated, who have a different culture, who follow a different religion, that's going to have a massive impact on social cohesion. He was called xenophobic by the New York Times and others simply for making that point. And as he said, it's also about how these European countries like Hungary are being punished for defying the EU. Yes. It's all about centralizing power under the EU to the point where sovereign nations have no control over their own border policies. So whereas countries like the United Kingdom have got opt-outs, others are, are wedded into this EU superstate bureaucracy where they have to go along with anything that comes out of Germany. So it, it's, a, it's a power struggle between these countries who are trying to reclaim some of their sovereignty and the EU, which is forcing them to go along with it. But even now, Germany, of course, they rolled out the red carpet over the first couple of weeks as this migrant crisis, you know, went from being a trickle to a to a deluge, basically. But even now, Germany's reimposing some of the border controls. And how could they not have known that this is what would happen? You roll out the red carpet, you say, you know, we've got benefits, we've got welfare, we've got housing. There are mm -hmm. reports that they're now kicking out elderly homeless people who are being given temporary social housing in Germany, German citizens, to accommodate these migrants. And now Germany suddenly doubles back and says, oh, no, we're going to reimpose some border controls and crack down on this. Well, it's a bit too late now. Hundreds of thousands have got in, more are on their way. And I'm getting emails from people in Germany who live near these migrant centers. We've already talked about before the schools in Germany that are banning girls from wearing shorts so as not to offend Muslim migrants and provoke attacks. Now people who live in what in many cases are just small villages and towns, these aren't major city metropolitan areas, they live near these new migrant camps that have just been constructed to house all these incoming migrants over the past few weeks. And they say that, because bearing in mind these aren't prisons, I mean they're allowed out of these camps, they're saying that hundreds of men are just congregating on street corners because, again, there's no plan to assimilate them. Mm -hmm. They're just being allowed to roam around and congregate, and people are scared. Uh, young girls, their wives, they're scared of going out because there are literally hundreds of men just stood around in certain areas of these villages and towns. There was another guy in Finland who sent me a message, and he basically said, look, they... they changed a local bar into a migrant camp. There are, there are like 100 men there, because bearing in mind, the UN's own figures say that 72% of these migrants are men, only 13% women and 15% children. So this lie that it's all Syrian families is completely bogus. And this Finnish guy just said to me, I have a blonde wife, I have two blonde blue-eyed children, and I have a shotgun. And that's, you know, oh, my God, that sounds racist. Look at Sweden, 1,400% increase in rapes since they opened their door to mass immigration. Yes. Because, again, there's no assimilation plan. So people are frightened. People are not going out. They're not, they don't dare to go near these migrant centers. You know, schools in Germany are now saying don't offend the migrants or provoke attacks. We had a, a, an incident in Berlin yesterday where... Um, a jihadist tried to stab a policewoman, they had to shoot him. So people are frightened and people are gearing up because you can't just flood small villages full of hundreds of men from a completely different culture and not have problems. I mean, that's 
completely naive to suggest that. Exactly. They're standing around. They don't have anything to do. I think there's a lot of things that we can see in this, Paul, in terms of microcosm and in terms of how quickly this thing has gotten out of control that have parallels for Americans here in this country with our open borders. We've been talking about this. Things have been accelerating for us here in America, but we see with this rapid uh, uh, movement throughout Europe, we can see what is, is happening there. You talked about incentives, and we talk about building a wall here. The Republicans are talking about doing that. I think it's very telling for people to take a look at what happened in, in Hungary, where they put up razor wire. They're shooting water cannons at these people, tear gas. Nevertheless, they came through the razor wire as these people were fighting them. If you give people an incentive, whether it is destroying their home country and then offering them uh, the, this, um, uh, these, these incentives of the welfare state, that's what's going on right now. We see that uh, in spades in Europe, but essentially that's what's going on in Central and South America as well. We've got a war going on there, the drug war, that has killed more people than have died in Afghanistan. It's a, lower, it's a slower simmering war that's been going on for a long time, but we're destroying their countries nevertheless. And then at the same time, we offer them the incentives, these uh, incentives of a welfare state, of uh, free college, uh, essentially getting a uh, in-state tuition, anywhere you want to go is an illegal. And of course, American citizens don't get that kind of discretion where they go to school. And they're telling us here, just like they're telling the people in Europe, these are all children. And they're not children if they can get through this uh, this this multi-thousand mile journey. They're being escorted by people, perhaps traffickers. But the definition of children that Obama has put out there is people up to the age of 31. Those are the dreamers' age. So this is all predicated on a lie. But we have to understand that we cannot interdict with force when we create a war of destruction in their countries where we deliberately destroy their countries and then offer them incentives to immigrate into the West. No, and this is a point that we've touched upon many times, and it's still absent from the mainstream media narrative, which is don't destabilize secular governments in the Middle East and put jihadists into power. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, and yet they keep doing it over and over again. And many of these Syrian refugees, at least the legitimate ones, want to return to Syria. They don't want to stay in Europe because they had a relatively high standard of living in Syria. So, yeah, this is cut it off at its source. Don't give bombs and weapons to jihadists. Invest in these countries keep them stable and improve their quality of life. And then we wouldn't have a migrant crisis in the first place. Let me ask you about uh, another article that's up on uh, uh, Infowars.com to comment on this. Uh, this, of course, is your brother's article questioning whether or not the clock kid was a setup from the very beginning. His father is an Islamic phobic activist. He, he's an activist to counter Islamophobia. He says, I want to make sure that this type of thing is shut down globally. And so we've got Obama inviting him into the White House because he made a, a clock that looked very much like a suitcase bomb. Your comments, Paul. Well, this is one of those social justice warrior issues that they've all seized upon. And first of all, why, you know, reward him for this clock but with an invitation to the White House? It doesn't even look like a clock. No. If, somebody, if I bought that in a store and they said it was a clock, I'd take it back. I mean, it... It's, it's not a clock at all. As I said it before, looks, it looks like a prop from uh, uh, 24, you know, the uh, anti-terrorism. Yeah, it looks like a cheap, like, suitcase bomb. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it does. So now there are questions about, was it all a setup? Because his dad is this Islamophobic activist. The point I made was the kid who chewed out a Pop-Tart into the shape of a mm -hmm. gun, he didn't get an invite to the White House. People suspended for wearing American flag T-shirts. They don't get invitations. That's right. To the White House. Hang on People there, Paul. We got to take a break. We'll be right back with Paul Joseph Watson. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're talking to Paul Joseph Watson, the UK. We've been talking about his articles at Infowars.com. A top imam saying Muslim migrants should breed with Europeans to conquer their countries. And of course, he correctly points out that the Europeans. And I would say also to a lesser degree, but certainly it's still there. Americans have lost their fertility. We've seen many people argue that there's a sociological charge to it, a part to that, that that's all that it is. I think that is a part of it. I don't think that's all there is to it, Paul. I think that it's also what they're putting in our food and our water as well. What do you think? Well, from what I can recall writing about this in the past, the figures are crazy. It's something like a 14% decline in sperm count in men in mm -hmm. certain European countries since the late 80s. 
So it's been going on for, you know, 20 plus years. Um, and there could be there could be medical causes for that. Yeah, but it's another, a full-out assault, I think. It's not only sociological, but I think it's actually physiological in terms of that. And we've mentioned many times, when they put uh, fluoride, when they put other things in our food, it's deliberate that they put this stuff in there. Yeah, so we, we've seen declining sperm counts for, for at least two decades now. And then you add in the sociological aspect where children are increasingly seen as a financial burden. They're mm -hmm. not seen as providing joy and happiness and stability and securing the future not only of your family, your lineage, but the population of your country. As we become more decadent and more nihilistic in the West, um, not not just because of secularism, but just generally, you know, people people are having kids later and later. People used to have kids in their early twenties, you know, twenty five, thirty years ago. They're waiting longer and longer and having less kids, yes. and people are dying out. Europe's dying out. Europe, uh, Italy is a one point three level. The replacement rate is two point one. We're nowhere near that in most European countries. So we're dying out and they're bringing in, bringing in masses of illegal immigrants to try and get cheap labor. They're doing it for other reasons. Another story that I've got coming up is people smugglers uh, in these Middle Eastern countries are targeting uh, would-be economic migrants, not refugees from Syria, migrants from surrounding countries, with information websites that promise them, quote, free blonde Swedish girls and taxpayer-funded luxury treatment if they pay these people smugglers to help them reach Scandinavia. So huh. I'm guessing a lot of those, quote, free blonde Swedish girls won't be consensual given yeah. Sweden's 1,400% rise in rapes since the 70s, since they had mass immigration. Mm. And again, that's not a racist fact. It's an actual fact yeah. that 73% or more of these uh, culprits are uh, listed as, quote, foreigners and immigrants, even though, you know, less than 10% of the population in Sweden is immigrants. So they've got a massive problem with Muslim rape gangs. We had it in Britain with the Rotherham rape gang, which was covered up by the government because they said it was politically incorrect to try and go after these uh, rape gangs that were grooming young girls up in the northern English town of Rotherham, where I used to live. So we've got a huge problem with this, and it's only going to get worse now that they're bringing in, bringing in potentially millions of Muslim migrants over the next 10, 20 years. Absolutely. Of course, if you point out a statistical fact showing the explosion in rapes in Sweden with, with massive immigration, they push back and, and say you're xenophobic, you're racist, and I think that's a big part of what's going on with this clock situation. I think this clock kid, quite frankly, Paul, is the uh, Tawana Brawley of uh, Islam. Uh, we all remember that uh, she's the person that Al Sharpton used to uh, make himself a celebrity. Now Obama is doing the same thing. Of course, Mark Zuckerberg as well. Thank you for joining us, Paul Joseph Watson. Stay with us. We're going to have Wayne Madsen joining us in the next hour. We're going to have news at the top of the hour in just one moment. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this Friday, September 18th, 2015. Wayne Madsen is going to be joining us in the next segment. We're going to talk to him about the uh, Republican debate and a variety of issues. Of course, the other thing that happened this week was the Federal Open Market Committee of the Federal Reserve. They had been selling a story, essentially, that implied they were going to raise interest rates. They've been lowering them for quite some time. As a matter of fact, since the uh, economic crash back in 2008, uh, they want to say that that was all George W. Bush's fault. I think it was really predicated by the Federal Reserve. I'm not saying that Bush was uh, a great president by any means, but we need to understand that it is the Federal Reserve and the bankers that they, that Bush and others have complicitly let do this that are really manipulating the economy. We had in the debate a silly, silly question that I think the candidates should have stood up and said, we're trying to discuss serious issues in this country. I refuse to answer that question. Who should be the new face on the $10 bill? Understand that they have destroyed 99% of the value of the dollar. Who cares what clown face they put on it? 
It has a purchasing price of a penny 100 years ago since we created the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve comes out and says that they're not going to raise interest rates. Wall Street fell this morning about 1%. They had been 